Everybody, Jim here. Welcome back to my palatial Tokyo estate for another edition of more games. And uh, today, oh boy, how much fun is this? Uh, 100% Atari 2600 games on this episode. Um, I was talking to someone about some old school, we were talking about in television. Uh, Atari stuff like that and it dawned on me that while I've been in the presence of an Atari 2600 in my life I uh, actually never have played a 2600 uh, Ever so like that just struck me as like kind of weird like I could have sworn in my mind like I've played a 2600 before um, But I think I've only ever watched other people play it and like I've played on Atari collections and things before um, but I've actually never physically played an Atari 2600, and I could probably count on one hand, like, the, um, the games I've played on, like, collections or, like, digitally somehow. Uh, so, I actually loaded up all this stuff on an emulator, obviously. Um, Atari 2600 and television, ColecoVision, that era of games, actually very difficult to come by uh, here in Japan. Uh, so I did emulate everything. I used an emulator called Stella, which uh, worked really well. Uh, so if you're out there, you want to play some 2600 games, you don't have physical cartridges or even access uh, to physical cartridges, uh, load up Stella. It was, uh, I was very happy with it. Um, so every game uh, I played uh, for this episode actually played for the very first time ever. Uh, went in blind on all of them. Some of them I had heard about. Some of them are ports of games I've played in the past uh, So there wasn't really any like big surprises um, But all of them I played for the very first time ever uh, So you're gonna get my my hot takes my friend <laughs> I don't know if you can have a hot take on like an Atari 2600 game at this point um, uh, Who the hell cares honestly anyway? Uh, so I played half a dozen Atari 2600 games I uh, had fun with, well, I guess I would say I had fun with all of them, uh, some more so than others, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, so let's not waste any more time, which is what I'm good at, wasting time. Uh, let's get right to it. Here's our first game. Okay, first up, Missile Command, uh, which when I found out there was a 2600 version of Missile Command, uh, this was like the first game I wanted to play. As soon as I started emulating 2600 games, uh, I really love Missile Command, the arcade game. I think it's one of the best arcade games ever. Uh, very simple premise, very easy to understand, but very addictive uh, and very fun gameplay. And obviously, the 2600 version is not going to play nearly as smooth as its arcade counterparts. Uh, Missile Command in the arcade is a trackball game, and again, the movement is super smooth and fast, uh, which makes it so much fun. Here, though, I was, like, concerned because, like, I know the Atari 2600 joystick, maybe it's not, like, the most versatile uh, controller in the world, um, but playing this with my 8-bit dough, I think it's, like, the ultimate USB controller, whatever it's called, um, with the analog sticks, uh, it played just fine and uh, You know still really fun like I think it's kind of hard to screw up missile command um, You'd have to be like trying to screw it up just shoot the bombs out of the sky and that's that's it basically defend your little cities and uh, That's all she wrote uh, So this is fun um, very primitive looking game obviously it's literally just like lines and dots and uh, very basic shapes on the screen um, but when the premise of a game is so easy to understand and so fun and addictive uh, that's really all you need I guess now I'm starting to appreciate uh, that that's kind of the beauty of the 2600 that when a game is really fun you really you barely need graphics at all you can literally just have lines and dots but if the, the premise of the gameplay is fun then you're gonna have fun with the game graphics be damned uh, so yeah, I 
had a very fun gameplay session with this, and I'm probably going to play some more. Uh, try to get my high score up there. I don't think I'm going to reach uh, quite the heights of uh, Mr. Awesome, uh, but I'll give it the old college try. Anyway, Missile Command on the 2600. Pretty damn awesome. Alright, next up we have Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, which is a game I honestly I wanted to play ever since uh, seeing it in the uh, AVGN episode, like I don't know, like over 10 years ago. Um, yeah, it looks like ridiculous. I think like, what, what an ambitious uh, developer to want to convert the Texas Chainsaw Massacre into an Atari 2600 game. Uh, it's just silly. Uh, so your leather face, you're walking around a big field, I guess. And the obstacles are like like parts of a fence and wheelchairs and like, I think thickets, like, like bushes. And like if a single pixel of your body uh, touches anything, you come to a dead stop. Uh, and you've got fuel, your fuel is constantly running out. Uh, and the whole premise of the game, chase a young woman or a series of young women uh, down in, the, in this field and then kill them with your chainsaw, which in this case looks like, yeah, like a deformed, like mutated arm or like a giant cock sticking out of uh, Leatherface's body. Again, uh, the simplicity of these 2600 games, what they tried to do with such simple graphics, uh, it's kind of adorable. Uh, anyway, so in this game, you walk around a field, you chainsaw some women to death, uh, trying not to run out of fuel for your uh, chainsaw. I think every woman you kill is, I don't know, like a thousand points or a couple thousand points. I can't recall right now. Um, but that's that's it. Run around a field, uh, kill some women with your funny-looking chainsaw, and try not to collide with too many wheelchairs. Why would there be that many wheelchairs, though? Like, that's baffling to me. There was one guy in a wheelchair in the movie, and uh, that's something they picked up for the game. They're like, just, there's tons of wheelchairs everywhere. Anyway, uh, is this a fun game? No, not really. Like, it's kind of amusing for, like, five minutes, uh, but then once it's done, it's done. Like, the previous game, Missile Command, like, you can play that game forever. Uh, incredibly simple game, but incredibly fun. Here, though, also, like, a very fun, primitive game. Uh, but not nearly as fun, because you're just doing this, the one thing that you do in this game uh, isn't a very challenging or fun thing to do. I'd love to know what the world record is on this, like the high score. Uh, there's got to be someone out there who loves this game enough to get like a billion points. Uh, maybe it was Todd Rogers. We should go check Todd Rogers' score. He probably has 1 billion, 500 million points on this. Uh, he chainsawed like, I don't know, a billion women. Uh, anyway, that's it. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Wow, what a great game. Okay, next up, uh, since I played Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know I had to play uh, Halloween. It's like horror movie counterpart again. Uh, was exposed to it by watching the AVGN video. This game, I would say, is definitely uh, more fun than Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Were they both made by Wizard? I guess they both were. Uh, here you play as Lori and you run around to this house. It's like uh, two floors and you have to go into a room where there's a little kid you're babysitting. Uh, you get them, like you get them to follow you and then you take them back to a safe room. And every kid you deliver to this safe room you get, I think a thousand points. Uh, but Michael Myers is just like always like walking around. Like as soon as he enters the screen, the Halloween theme starts playing. 
Uh, and if he makes contact with the kid, he murders the little kid, uh, which is honestly pretty amusing. And then if he makes contact with you, he stabs your head off. <laughs> and, like, blood goes spurting out. Uh, so again, like, you know, kind of cute, kind of charming that they did this with a 2600 game. Uh, somebody had, like, this limited palette to work with, and they're like, you know what, I still want to make a game where someone gets their head stabbed off and blood spurts out everywhere. It's funny that you can actually tell what's happening. You're like, ah, that's a decapitated body, how neat. Uh, so again, like, you know, Chainsaw Massacre, it's a game with not a lot to it. Um, but at least, like, you're moving around, you're like, you have a goal to, like, get something from one place and bring it to another place or something. It's not, you know, just simply running around aimlessly, which is what Chainsaw Massacre really is. Like, you want to go murder the women, but essentially you're just running around a big empty area. Here, you actually have, like, a goal, like something you're trying to accomplish, um, that requires more than just walking to the left or right. I mean, not much more. You just go grab the kid and that's it, you're done. Um, but there's some stakes. The stakes are raised because the kids can die and you can die. Uh, and Chainsaw Massacre, you can't die. You just run out of fuel, which isn't nearly as bad. Also in here, you can pick up, uh, I guess it's supposed to be a knife. It's been pointed out that it looks more like a dildo. Uh, and it does. But, you know, what can you do? 2600, there weren't a lot of options. Um, anyway, yeah, Halloween, um, still... Not a particularly, like, good or, or fun game. Again, like, this is one you play for, like, five minutes just out of curiosity. Just to see what it, you know, what it's really like. If, you know, you're not satisfied with just, like, seeing, you know, old AVGN videos. You want to try it for yourself. Um, but after you've played it for a little bit, uh, you're pretty much done. Another game, I'd love to know what the world record high score is. Uh, how much, how many points did Todd Rogers get on this one? I'd, I'd really like to know. Um, me though, I think uh, the highest I got was like four or five thousand points, and then I was like, okay, I, I guess I, I know what this game has to offer. Uh, anyway, humble beginnings for horror games: Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Halloween. Uh, they're not perfect; they're not even any good, really. Uh, but there's something. Uh, there's something else. So there it is: Halloween 2600. <laughs> Next up, we have the original Mario Brothers, uh, which I was really interested to see what this game would play like on the 2600. Like, I think I've seen the uh, old commercial for it, where it's like Luigi, and he's like, Mario, where are you? Uh, that was kind of cute. I've played this game in the arcade, and I've played it on the Famicom, and, you know, probably on, like, something else, like... Uh, the on Super Mario 3, you can do an original Mario Brothers thing, like a versus mode, uh, and that's a lot of fun. Um, here though, like it's it's just Mario Brothers. It's just very primitive looking. Like the coins are just like little squares, like little blinking multicolored squares. Um, I mean, you can tell like the uh, the turtles look like turtles, the crabs look like crabs. Uh, but I guess I just couldn't figure out a coin, which is weird because the fireball, they have the fireball in here too. The fireball looks okay. Uh, the fireballs are like constantly moving around the screen. Like they don't generate every once in a while. It's like as soon as one leaves the screen, another one is on the screen. Um, so yeah, I mean, kind of a difficult little game, I suppose. Uh, challenging enough uh, since the, the controls are so stiff mainly. Uh, and then when you do the little bonus stage where you have to collect the coins, they, they look, they're not circles, because obviously everything's at an angle. Um, but it's circular enough. It definitely looks a lot more like a coin, uh, than the, the little, uh, squares do. Uh, anyway, just wanted to check this one out, see how it played, how it compared to the arcade. Uh, I'll do the same thing. I know the, uh, the, uh, port of Pac-Man is supposed to be, like, one of the most horrible, disappointing games that was ever made uh, in the history of humanity. Uh, so I still haven't even touched that yet. Um, I, I'm not really looking forward to it, but I, I have to know for myself. Like, when you hear a game is, like, that bad, uh, you have to give it a shot. So I do intend to at least try out Pac-Man and, like, E.T., some other stuff in the near future. Uh, anyway, Mario Bros. Yeah, a very primitive version uh, of the uh, arcade original, but, you know, still playable. Uh, still a pretty fun little game. Uh, check it out. Five stars, check it out. I don't know. 
Uh, yeah, Mario Brothers. Pretty cool. Next up is Star Wars Return of the Jedi uh, Death Star Battle, which um, of all the Star Wars games, I wanted to try this one out uh, the most just because uh, what I understand of Empire Strikes Back, uh, it's just like single screen flying to the left and right. It, it doesn't look very good, but I saw uh, this, I think, again, I think this is a game I saw on AVGN or maybe like some other YouTube channel. And it looked like there was at least a little more to it uh, than what you did in Empire Strikes Back. So I wanted to play this. Um, it is kind of cool. You're in the Millennium Falcon, and it's nice. You can tell that you're in the Millennium Falcon. The TIE Fighters look like TIE Fighters, but they're purple. Just fine. Who doesn't, you know, who never wanted to see a purple TIE Fighter? Um, but you start out, I guess you're behind, like, um, like defense shields or something. And there are ships flying at you, so you destroy some ships, and then eventually holes will open up in the uh, like the force field, and you can go through, and then there you are. You're at the Death Star, and the Death Star is just a big... Uh, it sort of approximates a circle. Again, everything is a square uh, you know, pixel in these games. Um, but it's got a red dot in the middle, which is obviously what you need to hit. And then there's a green dot that moves around and shoots uh, the super laser at you. Uh, which that's the thing that got me killed most often because you have to like stop in one spot and shoot upwards To get to the core of the Death Star and then that thing will almost uh, Certainly get you. This was my first time playing it though I'm sure I can get better if I give it a you know a few more tries try to get that high score up I did destroy the Death Star a couple of times uh, Which is pretty cool because it it goes all like strobe effect when it explodes and that's really fun um, so yeah, for a 2600 game, um, this looked and played uh, a bit more like, uh, you know, something you could call like a game. Especially for like a movie license game, like it's not like Chainsaw Massacre and Halloween where the, the gameplay barely even exists. You're actually doing something here, you're like shooting stuff, you're avoiding things, you're like, like moving around and... Uh, when you transition from one screen to the next, there's kind of a cool little transition effect. Uh, so they actually tried with this game. It was Star Wars after all. You can't uh, you can't skip out when it comes to Star Wars, especially not in the 80s. Uh, you can put out a bad E.T. game, but you put out a bad Star Wars game and that's your ass. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, Death Star Battle, pretty cool if you, you know, played 2600 games. If you've never played Death Star Battle before, uh, it's actually pretty fun. This is one that I could see myself playing more of in the future. Uh, and trying to get a decent score at some point, uh, so it's it's awesome. Um, not as I don't like it as much as Missile Command, but it's definitely better than it's better than Texas Chainsaw. It's better than Halloween. Better than Mario Brothers. Um, I would say, but it is my third favorite game of these six that I played recently because uh, the second favorite uh, is coming up next. But Return of the Jedi: Death Star Battle, uh, pretty cool. Okay, so for the last game, I have Roadrunner, um, which honestly, I was just looking like through ROMs, just trying to pick something that looked like it might be fun to play. Uh, and then when I saw Roadrunner, I was like, I like Roadrunner and Wiley Coyote. I was like, you know what, screw it, let's give this game a try. Uh, because if I recall correctly, there's a Roadrunner arcade game, which I think think this is like a port of the arcade game um, but it's fun again a game that's like incredibly simple but it's really enjoyable because the premise just makes it fun so you're the road runner uh, you're running at top speed across the highway in a desert the coyote is chasing you obviously 
And that's all you gotta do is, one, keep up your speed, which you do by eating bird seed, which are the little collections of blue dots. And then you avoid obstacles. The obstacles are cars and then eventually other things like little, the little blue rectangles are bombs. So don't run into bombs, don't run into cars. Uh, collect as much bird seed as possible to get your score up, but also to keep outrunning the coyote. And then there eventually, you're gonna have to like jump over obstacles and things like that. Uh, so that's it. You literally just move up and down and then occasionally jump over stuff. But for whatever reason, I found myself like really enjoying this game. It was one of those, you know, games where uh, I play for a little bit. So I'll get to like midway to the end of like stage two or something and then die. Uh, die three times. Again, based on an arcade game, you got three lives and that's it. Um, but I found myself starting over like uh, again and again. Like uh, my average game in this lasted like two minutes. But I probably sat down and played it for like a half an hour or so. Uh, just to see if I could get past level two. I think I got past level two like one time um, So but again, I didn't give myself very much time I'm sure I could do better if I actually put some practice in uh, this does make me want to like seek out the arcade game as well I'll probably just go grab the arcade game for MAME or something and see how that plays um, But yeah, this is really fun Graphics are really simple, but again, you can tell that one character is the Roadrunner one character is the Coyote um, it's, you know, set in a desert, so that's not too hard to pull off on a 2600. The only st other stuff you ever see is, you know, you can make it with squares. Again, the bird seed, the little bombs, the cars. Um, so that's about it. So, yeah. Uh, fun game. Super simple, but, uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Roadrunner is an addictive game, uh, that I had quite a bit of fun with. So if you've never played Roadrunner, either on the 2600 or the arcade, whatever the case may be, uh, do it. <laughs> Play Roadrunner because it's a lot of fun. And he makes the beep beep sound. Um, there aren't a lot of sounds that the uh, Atari 2600 can do, but it can do the beep beep. And uh, it also has like a little bit of music too. So as far as sound design, actually, you know what? Of all the games I played for this video, I think the best sound design uh, probably has to go just by default to Halloween just because it has... An okay rendition of the Halloween theme song. So even though that game's not any good, it at least has that. So that's kind of cool. Worst sound design. I mean, I don't know. I guess that goes to Texas Chainsaw. Because you got to listen to that damn, the sound of the chainsaw the entire time. I mean, Missile Command doesn't really have any music. It's just the sound of explosions. But when you got a 2600 game, some explosions is really all you need. Um, so yeah. Uh, cool game. Uh, second favorite of the six games. I played for this video with my favorite still being Missile Command just because, you know, it's Missile Command. What can you do? Uh, but Roadrunner, uh, pretty cool. I'm rambling now. I'm such a rambly guy. Uh, Roadrunner, I think I said enough. It's a good game. Check it out. So there you go, everybody. Those are six Atari 2600 games. Uh, I just recently played for the first time. Uh, so let me know down in the comments, what do you think of any of these games? Have you played any of them? Uh, are any of them amongst your favorites on the console? Let me know if you have a favorite uh, 2600 game. Let me know what it is because again, uh, I could have counted on one hand the amount of 2600 games I've played. Uh, so this is just six more to add to the pile, so I guess I could probably count on two hands now uh, The number of 2600 games I've actually played in my life. Uh, I had fun with these games Obviously something like Missile Command is is gonna be great no matter like well I don't know if I'd say no matter what you're playing it on but generally speaking uh, Missile Command you can be pretty assured uh, You're gonna have some fun and uh, I was happy to finally play uh, Halloween and uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Even though both of them, neither of them is a particularly uh, good game, I had fun playing them. And I'd wanted to play them ever since I saw them on AVGN, so at least I, I got the opportunity to do that, so that was fun. Uh, so again, yeah, let me know down in the comments uh, what you thought of these games and anything else you want to throw down there. I don't know. Whatever the case may be, you might want to call me an asshole. You might want to say, great video, Jim. Keep up the good work. I don't know. Uh, but I do go down and read those, so it's uh, always nice to hear from you. Anyway, I'm rambling again. 
Uh, so thanks for watching this edition of More Games, everybody. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.